There I was, caught in my own game, outwitted and destroyed. My heart raced with the painful realization that I'd been a complete fool. Hi, I'm Ella Holmes, the world's best detective. No, wait, I'm Ella Stone. And technically, I'm not a detective, more of a detective enthusiast. And this is my story. Don't forget to like and subscribe. Ever since I was little, I was fascinated by mysteries. I'd read detective stories under the blanket with a flashlight on. When I was seven, I was convinced that my teacher was a criminal. She had these beady eyes and this creepy old face, so I followed her and caught her stealing money from the school <gasps> bake sale. The principal gave me an award and everyone cheered. I was on top of the world, but of course, I couldn't stop there. I sought out more mysteries to solve, like who wrote bad words on the bathroom stalls, left their stinky gym socks on the floor, had a secret crush, or farted in the library. To me, everyone at school was a suspect and had something to hide. I know you did it! Don't you lie to me! But I'm innocent! Wait, what are we even talking about? Eventually, things got out of hand. Kids ran away when they saw me. I didn't do whatever you think I did. Leave me alone! They got really mad when they caught me searching through their stuff for evidence, so I didn't have many friends. But that was okay, because I had Jenny. Jenny was my neighbor, and we've been best friends since I saw her playing in her front yard, and this mean girl walked up and pulled her hair. Ouch, that hurts. Oh, look at the big baby. Is she gonna cry? Leave her alone, you dirty scoundrel. You shameless knave. What the heck is a knave? Use a dictionary. Then I threw my dictionary in her face, kicked her in her big butt, punched her nose, and started screaming like a maniac. After that, Jenny and I were inseparable, and she always made sure I had the best shoes. You see, Jenny's dad was the biggest shoe manufacturer in the country, and Jenny was a spoiled princess. She had the most out outrageous birthday parties, and they always had a theme. When she was turning 15, her theme was awesome magical princesses, but I wouldn't wear a pink glittery dress, not for her or for anyone. Ella, who are you supposed to be? Hercule Poirot? Duh. You are supposed to be an awesome magical princess. If you're not a princess, then the party won't work. It'll be too confusing. My birthday will be ruined. The pictures, oh my God, the pictures. What am I gonna do? This is terrible. This is a disaster. Just as Jenny was about to have a meltdown, I got an idea. I snatched a tiara off a pinata and put it on my head. Hey, look, Jenny, I'm Princess Poirot. Jenny gave me a hug and the party was going fine until I saw this shady looking clown hanging around Jenny's gifts. I crept over to get a closer look, but he spotted me and he started running. Hey, stop that clown. I chased him down. He tossed a balloon at me, but I jumped over it and accidentally bumped the gift table, which fell into the pool. Then I tackled the clown and we smashed into the cake. Ella? I looked up to see Jenny crying and all the guests glaring at me. Come to find out, the clown was Jenny's harmless grandpa. After that, I was kicked out of the party and Jenny stopped talking to me completely. But things changed a couple years later when I heard Jenny sobbing in her backyard one day. Hey, are you okay? Do I look like I'm okay? My heart is shattered. I'll always be alone. I'll never find love again. Wanna talk about it? To my surprise, Jenny spilled the beans. She told me she met a boy, but she lost his number. Okay, what's his name? Alex. Jenny shook her head in despair. She only knew his first name. Don't worry, I'll find him for you. I kept my promise to Jenny. We spent the whole night combing the internet, and we finally found Jenny's crush. We sent him a message, and he asked Jenny out on a date. Jenny was over the moon. You're the most awesome friend in the entire world, and the best detective I know. It felt good to have my BFF back. A couple of weeks later, Jenny threw one of her famous slumber parties. She invited me and the most popular girls in school. We were having fun playing games and asking Ask Brain 2 to tell us our future. When nature called, Jenny's bathroom was already taken, so I had to go to the one in the hallway. I went past Jenny's dad's office. The door was open, and there was enough light for me to see his huge library with wall-to-wall -wall bookshelves. I couldn't help myself. I had to look around. Then I noticed a slightly crooked book. It messed with my OCD, and I pushed it so it was symmetrical with the rest of them. Suddenly, the shelves started moving and a door opened behind them. There was a room with stacks and stacks of documents. I picked up a file and read it. I was shocked to discover that Jenny's dad's factories were a complete scam and that the shoes that were supposedly made in the U.S. were made in a foreign country in sweatshops. I took one of the folders and ran out of there. I knew this wasn't right. I stashed it in my bag and ran back to Jenny's room to tell her about it. Your dad has a secret. We need to talk. Not now, Ella. But it's really important. How many times must I tell you, this is not a mystery party. It's a TikTok party. So 
please shut up and dance. The next day, Jenny left town with her family before we could have a conversation. I tried calling her, but she didn't answer her phone. After a few days, I started getting squirrely. I couldn't sit on the secret for another minute. I'd solved the crime of the century. Okay, maybe it wasn't that big, but it was the biggest crime my city had ever seen. I went to the police. I had to do the right thing. It was my duty as a detective. I took the evidence to the police, and the next day when Jenny and her family got back to town, Jenny's dad was arrested. My face was in the paper for cracking open the case. I was suddenly famous, and people started hiring me for my detective skills. But soon after, Jenny's dad's company was shut down and he was sent to prison. Her mom had to sell their house and move into a small apartment on the bad side of town. Jenny's mom hadn't worked a day in her life, so she struggled to find a job. Things were so bad, I even saw Jenny and her mom waiting in line at the soup kitchen. I felt so bad that I tried to apologize. Get out of my face, you traitor! I'm sorry, Jenny. I didn't realize that this would be so painful for you. Are you some kind of idiot? You sent my dad to jail and destroyed our lives! What part about this did you think would be fun for me? I started leaving money from my detective jobs in Jenny's mailbox to help Jenny and her mom out, though it wasn't much. My biggest job was finding Principal Bynum's lost cat Pookie and my math teacher's missing golf clubs. Then one day, I got a DM for a job, and the client wanted to pay me $50,000. I met my potential client at a coffee shop downtown. His name was Vance, and he was a couple of years older than me. He was dressed in a Versace suit and a Rolex watch, and he smelled like heaven. Something was stolen from me, and I need you to get it back. I'm good at finding things, but shouldn't you go to the police? A couple from another table glanced in our direction. Vance leaned toward me. I think we may need to speak somewhere a little more private. He grabbed my hand and pulled me outside. When his fingers touched mine, my heart raced. An evil man tricked my grandmother into giving him a priceless heirloom. Vance showed me a picture of a golden Fabergé egg lined with emeralds and rubies. It was the most beautiful thing I'd ever seen. It's worth one million dollars, but I'll give you a finder's fee. All you have to do is break into this evil man's house and get it. Vance took off his sunglasses and looked up at me with the most beautiful sapphire eyes, and I almost melted into a puddle. I'd never felt like this about a boy before. I shook the feeling off and regained my focus. I was a professional. Sorry, I'm not a thief, I'm a detective. What you're asking me to do is a crime. Vance stared at me for a moment, then he leaned against the wall and sighed. <sighs> you're right, that would be wrong. I was just so sad. I didn't know where to turn or what to do. I read about how you took down the corrupt businessman. I thought you could help me. That egg means so much to me. But I see now that I was wrong. I hope you can forgive me. Vance stepped toward me. He brushed a strand of hair behind my ear. My heart turned a dozen flips. It's okay. I understand. We all make mistakes. Thank you, Ella. My granny would have liked you. Vance kissed me on the cheek, then walked away. I could barely sleep that night because I kept dreaming of Vance and his pretty eyes. A couple days later, the strangest thing happened. I went to Jenny's house to drop off some money in the mailbox, and I heard Jenny screaming like a banshee. I ran inside and saw Jenny's house in shambles. Furniture was knocked over, and glass was shattered everywhere, like there had been some kind of struggle. My mom's been kidnapped! I started to call the police, but Jenny snatched my phone and threw it out the window. What did you do that for? The kidnappers left a note. They said they'd hurt her if I called the police. The detective in me leapt into action. I snatched the note out of Jenny's hand and read it. The kidnappers said they'd trade Jenny's mom for $100,000 in the next 24 hours. What if we called the police? We could kiss Jenny's mom goodbye. I don't know what to do. I couldn't let Jenny lose both her parents because of me. We'll have to give them the cash. Are you delusional? I don't have that kind of money. My mom and I are flat broke thanks to you, remember? Then something inside me clicked. I think I can get the money. How? Don't worry about it. Just sit tight. I'll be back soon. I raced out of Jenny's house and called Vance. Is your job still on the table? Yes, but I thought you weren't interested. Make it $100,000 in cash and I'm in. Deal. Vance gave me the evil man's address and told me where to find the Fabergé egg. I rode my bike to the evil man's house. I saw an open window on the first floor. There were a few cameras outside the house, so I put a mask on, then climbed through the window. I tiptoed through the house. I found the egg and put it in my backpack. And just as I was about to leave, I tripped over Pookie, the principal's cat. Pookie jumped up and thrust her claws into my chest. I screamed and then all the lights in the house turned on. Principal Bynum ran down the stairs in his nightgown and a bat. Thief, let go of my sweet cat. Principal Bynum chased me around the room, and Pookie got so scared she started scratching me. I finally pulled Pookie off me, set her on the floor, and rushed out the door. I climbed on my bike and raced home as fast as I could. As soon as I walked through the door, I got a call from Jenny. The kidnappers want their money now. 
I thought we had 24 hours. They changed the timeline. I hung up with Jenny and called Vance. We met at a park near my house. Do you have the egg? Yes, it's here. I gave Vance the egg. What about the money? Vance gave me a duffel bag. It's all there. I must get going now. I have a flight to catch. Vance kissed me on the cheek and then got into his fancy car and drove off. I hopped onto my bike and headed straight to Jenny's, but as I was riding down the road, the cops appeared out of nowhere. They'd received an anonymous tip that I'd stolen the egg. The police hauled me off to jail. Principal Bynum and my parents were so disappointed. Mom, Dad, the principal's evil. He stole that egg from someone, and I had to steal it back because I had to pay off the kidnappers because Jenny's mom's life was in danger. I had to do it. Everyone looked at me like I was crazy. Ella, you must be mistaken. I bought the egg in an auction. I have the receipt. And Jenny's mom was never kidnapped. She's probably safe at home, fast asleep. And that money in your bag is fake. The officer opened the duffel bag, and when I looked inside, my blood ran cold. All the money was Monopoly money. I'd been tricked. I felt like such an idiot. But what happened next totally rocked my world. The police told me that Vance was Jenny's cousin, and he was a thief wanted in connection to a dozen robberies around the world. The police had been monitoring him for years. We tapped Vance's phone and overheard his plans with Jenny to frame you for stealing the egg. Then he would leave the country, sell the egg, and transfer half the money to Jenny. But if we know anything about Vance, he's gonna double-cross Jenny too and not give her a dime for it. It turned out the police officer was right because when they went to arrest Jenny and her mom, they confessed to the crime and said Vance hadn't been answering any of their calls. Thanks to the tracker, he was soon caught at an airport and taken to jail for his crimes. As Jenny's trial was about to start, I spoke to the principal. I'm sorry, Mr. Bynum. What I did was wrong, but please don't be so hard on Jenny and her family. It's my fault she did what she did. I set out to find the truth, but I hurt her more than I could ever know. Because of me, her dad is in jail, and she's lost the life she knew. On the day the judge was set to sentence Jenny, Principal Bynum asked him for leniency. Instead of going to juvenile hall, she had to do community service, picking up trash on the road for six months. And one day, I joined her. I heard what you said to Principal Bynum. Why would you want to help me after I framed you. You're my friend, and I regret what I did to you, even if what I did was right. I'm sorry for what I did, and I think we're way past even now. Maybe we could start with a clean slate? Really? I miss my best friend. Me too.